college football week seven picks against the spread, and this has been billed as the greatest college football weekend of all time. Now, after a couple of losses, it did tame down a little bit, but we still have rivalries and big games, and you know we well over 50% over here on Unafraid Show because this is where you get your bread. Texas at Oklahoma plus 15 in the Red River rivalry. Now, Steve Sarkeesian already has said that Quinn Ewers will be back in the saddle for the Longhorns after missing the last few weeks due to an injury. And Texas fans have had a taste of what Arch Manning can do. So they're excited. Their whistle is wet. So there has to be a little bit of pressure on Ewers to hit the ground running in what is their most important regular season game of the year for that fan base. Oklahoma, on offense, they have not looked great this season. But all the elements are there for this team to be a problem for anybody in college football. They have a top 20 scoring defense with 11, not 10, but 11 different players that have multiple tackles for loss and nine different players that have forced a turnover. This defense is good. Plus, this Red River rivalry has been insanely close. 10 of the last 11 times it's been played, it don't matter what the teams look like, it has been absolutely decided by one score. And that is the beauty of the Red River rivalry. And if you're betting on Texas to cover this spread, you are betting against history and you are a braver man than me. But if Texas does cover, it might be because superstar freshman edge rusher Colin Simmons is able to harass fellow Dallas area freshman Michael Hawkins Jr. into making critical mistakes or maybe two. But my bet is on Oklahoma's defense to keep this game close. And you guys, make sure that you like, subscribe, tell a friend about the Unafraid Show, and get notifications. Next game up, Penn State minus five and a half at USC. This one, honestly, is pretty simple for me. USC has improved on defense, and I know that the numbers that Matt Leiner pointed out don't support that, but they also have played a tougher schedule up to this point. And they deserve a world of credit for how far that they've come defensively and their toughness and the fact that they show up and actually tackle people the majority of the time. And I don't care that they've lost two games already. And after last year, I'm not sure anybody would be shocked that they'd open up the year three and two with two losses to Big Ten schools. But their head coach, Lincoln Riley, he's doing well with his first non-mobile quarterback in several years in Miller Moss. Because obviously he had, you know, Caleb Williams, Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, Jalen Hurts. And Miller Moss is a totally different type of quarterback. And he's got a running game in place where it looks like he can compete in the Big Ten. And this defense is well coached with DeAnton Lynn, who should be a head coach next season. And it is light years ahead of where I expected them to be after years of terrible practice habits and zero accountability. Now, on the other side, though, you got Penn State. They bring in the best running game and the best run defense that USC will have seen all season long. And you know the old saying, nothing travels better than defense and the run game. And Penn State's Nick Singleton and Katron Allen are probably the best one-two punch at running back in the entire country. And they'll both supposedly be healthy for this game. And if you have ever, if you have ever watched the Unafraid Show or any of my content, then you know I'm not the biggest Drew Aller fan who's Penn State's quarterback. But that's because he doesn't go beyond the game manager to game winner and when he's been needed to. But Michigan proved that you can beat USC in crunch time without a quarterback needing to do much of anything, really. And Drew Aller, he doesn't make mistakes this season. He has three interceptions in 552 career pass attempts. So you know he is not going to be the reason why his team cost the game because he turned the ball over. So give me the Nittany Lions minus five and a half. Next game up, I will be at this game, Ohio State at Oregon plus three. Now, this is an evenly matched game if I've ever seen one because both Ohio State and Oregon just went head to head with Michigan State and dominated. And both teams are running the ball at an elite level. Both of these offenses have played hyper efficient. 
both of these team stars have looked like stars. And you have guys like Jeremiah Smith for Ohio State. Dude is an absolute menace at wide receiver. And for the Ducks, Taz Johnson has three 10 plus catch games already this season. Now the Ducks quarterback, Dylan Gabriel, he hasn't been perfect, but his history says he is battle tested. And this isn't gonna be a thing where the moment is gonna be too big for him. He played in the Red River rivalry and brought Oklahoma back to beat Texas last year. And I would believe that the moment wouldn't be too big for Dylan Gabriel, even if this game was in the shoe, but it is at Autzen Stadium and it is gonna be a massive advantage for the Ducks because it is going to be loud. It is going to be ruckus. It is going to be insane. Now on the Ohio State side, I see their fans out there dismissing how loud that Austin Stadium gets because there's going to be 40,000 less people than they're used to. But this is a matter of acoustics, not manpower. We work harder and not smarter out on the West Coast, people. Then you got Ohio State quarterback Will Howard. Because in his career against top 25 competition, he is two and five with 13 touchdowns and seven interceptions. And if I had to bet on anything in this game, it would be that Oregon gets a guaranteed extra chance or two via Will Howard turnover. And that should be enough for the Ducks to cover this three points at home. Kansas State at Colorado plus four and a half. The Kansas State Wildcats have faced three decent pass offenses this season. Tulane, Arizona, and Oklahoma State. And in those games, I'll give you that in two of them, they were guarding a large lead. Kansas State is giving up an average of 325 passing yards per game. Now you tell me, how am I supposed to look at an offense that averages 325 passing yards a game against a defense that gives up the same amount? Hmm. And that's Colorado's offense. And a lot of people thought it was a lose-lose for Colorado to have FCS powerhouse North Dakota State on their schedule. But not only did they win that game, they thrived against a defensive system that Chris Kleiman and Joe Klanderman run in Manhattan at Kansas State. So they've seen it before. Now, BYU, they beat up on Kansas State by being the more physical and disciplined team than the Wildcats. And that's not exactly Colorado's mode of operation. But what Colorado lacks in physicality and depth, they make up for in relentlessness because this is the team that consistently answers back. But if Colorado learned anything in their win over UCF, it's that it is much better to put your opponent in a position to handicap themselves than it is for you to stop their best players. That is the exact reason RJ Harvey didn't have a million yards against Colorado for UCF on the ground is that it didn't make sense for UCF to run the ball after getting down early. Now Colorado needs to do the exact same thing against Kansas State or DJ Giddens might have 150 plus yards rushing. Now, I think the Buffs get off to a good start and hold the Wildcats at arm's length. And yes, I'm taking this four and a half. And if Deion Sanders, if he gets the five and one boy, it is going to be ooh, ugly for people, boy. We got Ole Miss at LSU plus three and a half. One consistent theme of Brian Kelly's coaching career is that some of his toughest opponents that they come after the bye week. And the last two years, LSU was faced with taking on Nick Saban with LSU going one and one in those games. And this year, the Tigers host Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss, who are on the second week of back-to-back -back SEC road games and just make up for a home loss to Kentucky by smashing South Carolina in Columbia. Now you got Brady Swenson and Savion Jones. They've combined for nine and a half sacks for LSU. And that's going to be the Tigers best weapon in trying to keep Jackson's dart from hooking up with Trey Harris going downfield all game long. Now Ole Miss, I'm looking at this and I'm like, they might actually score a lot in this game. But LSU isn't exactly cash poor on offense because their quarterback, Garrett Nussmeyer, actually has a lot of similarities to Jackson Dart. He just doesn't use his legs as much, or ever really. But the LSU line, they protect him well after since the start of the season against USC. 
and he makes extremely quick decisions. And that's the thing that makes me feel like Ole Miss is going to have its pass rush actually neutralized, which along with home field advantage and two weeks rest makes me feel like LSU has the advantage in this game. So I am taking the home dog LSU Tigers. Florida plus 15 at Tennessee. Now, this is a big spread considering how beat up the volunteers are right now. Squirrel Wright, Dante Thornton, Bryson Eason, Brew McCoy, and Christian Harrison all aren't at 100%, and that could be a big factor for Tennessee. Now, on Florida's side, some people say that they're making this two quarterback system work with DJ Lagway being a situational guy and Graham Mertz taking the majority of the snaps. If their head coach, Billy Napier, is on the verge of losing his gig, his job at Florida, somebody forgot to tell linebacker Shamar James and wide receiver Elijah Badger, who are both playing out of their minds. Now, I'm not sure if these signs of life from the Gators over the last couple of weeks are enough to overcome just how good Tennessee can be on both sides of the ball. But I have to believe that it's enough to keep this game close, especially when Florida won this matchup last year by nearly the amount that the spread favors the volunteers this year. Betting on SEC games to have a two to three score gap is just never a sharp move. I mean, unless it involves Vanderbilt, but even that guarantee is out the window in 2024. And you guys, make sure that you like, subscribe, tell a friend about the Unafraid Show, and get notifications.